Training systems, welcome back. Today we have an awesome stretch, or I think, for really fixing the, the snap that we get in our hips sometimes when we're doing sit-ups, we're doing that favorite ab exercise where someone throws the legs down, we're sitting up from the ground, or even in some people when they're actually just walking or jogging. So I think you guys know what I'm talking about, right? That snapping sit thing that you get in your hip. So what this is, is actually just a tight hip flexor. So we've got two major ones we're gonna talk about today. And not only is this a fantastic way to address that and also open up the hip flexor, but if you're a professional dancer, I think this also has some other great benefits, right? Yeah, you really need it to do your splits and the highlights in dancing. Well, I think you were talking about the, a lot of people when they do their splits, they kind of cheat and open yeah. up that hip a little bit, right? Guys, that's the fake split. I call it the fake split because it's easier, but it's not the right stretching. I think that's actually really interesting that we can use this stretch, so don't change the channel yet. Don't be afraid thinking we're gonna do the splits because my mobility is not fantastic at all. But what I think is really interesting is someone as a professional dancer like yourself, which you guys will see her mobility is amazing and mine is not, but yet we still can use basically the same stretch to focus really on the same, but almost different things yes. at the same time. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's true. All right, so now we've kind of switched positions here a little bit because I want to start with the stretch because my mobility is definitely worse. You and have to suffer today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to be next, though. But um, I want you to also go into the viewers here about what you're talking about when, the, when we're talking about cheating within the split. So first, I'm going to start with talking about the stretch that we want, and then I'm going to have you jump in and tell me about you know, how, the, how, the, how the advanced people cheat. So first, what we want to do is, you see I've gotten my shoes off. A lot of times when I'm doing this at home, I, I don't have these laid down. I actually have my couch and I have my couch table. And often I keep the front foot, my sock off because what that allows me to do is very easily slide my front foot forward, which then opens up the space between my hip, which already will put a greater stretch on my hip flexor. But today, since we're in the CrossFit studio, I'm gonna use these two boxes and you're gonna see me walk forward with my foot. You're also gonna notice from the second camera that we're able to see the angle of my back leg. This is very important because this is what we're going to discuss later, how people cheat. The two muscles that we're going to want to focus on is going to be the iliacus, which we can see right now, and also the psoas major, but actually more of the iliacus, which I'm going to show again, because that is usually what's causing that snapping in the hip. So what we're going to want to do here is I'm going to start again bringing my foot forward. I'm going to want to keep my hips straight, and you're going to notice in the back that depending on where I want to bring my foot is going to be going to increase the stretch or decrease a little bit. Now, our muscles, the iliacus and psoas, actually turn the leg out. So we call them external rotators of the hip. So if I, as we can see in the back angle, bring my foot in, that is going to, sorry, bring my foot in like this, that is gonna actually internally rotate that hip and you're gonna feel a greater stretch. This is the part that's causing that snapping in the hip. So if we can begin to open this up, that snap will begin to stop or that lower back pain will start to go away. Now Lisa, what were you talking about how people cheat within your level of professional dance when they're doing the splits? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, first go a little bit up. Okay, so I come okay. back a little yeah, bit like this, back. exactly. Okay, now give a rotation to your shoulders and okay. try to your uh, hips. Yes. Okay. And now go again into the split. Ah, into okay, the sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, but you see what we're doing here. By the what you just described is by me coming back and me turning out, remember I said that hip flexor is it externally rotates the hip. So right now I'm shortening the muscle that I wanna that I wanna stretch and then I'm dropping back down into it. And in this position will be really easy to go into the split. Yeah, because you're kind of basically like cheating. 
yeah. right? And a I, lot of dancers are using it for a show because they have to show I'm a dancer, I can do the split, but in the end, it's not a split. But that actually also really makes sense why a lot of people doing the splits, if it's not from a CrossFit class, people trying to get better mobility or professional dancers, start getting that hip impingement because they're, they're cheating in the stretch. They're shortening the two muscles that they should be lengthening during that split, and then they're dropping down, which is causing that, that bone to really slam into the joint. And in this case, since we're not really trying to do the splits, we're trying to do that stretch. It's actually counterproductive and intuitive because we want that area to stretch. So again, we can see with basic mobility like myself and a professional dancer like you, we, we both actually kind of cheat in the same way. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna switch and we're gonna show what the better mobility looks like and some different things that we can also focus on and some ways that we can actually open up the area before we go into the stretch. Okay, before I drop into the position, I make sure I have not the wrong rotation. My hip is in the right direction and my shoulders. And the second point about what I want to talk is a lot of people make the mistake, they rotating the hips to the back and going into the stretch, which is really easy. I like to have my hips in a neutral position and then go into the stretch and you can feel a stronger stretch. Sometimes it's good to take it a little bit to the front or mm -hmm. how you call yeah, it, yeah. yeah, and then the stretch is stronger. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting point because the muscles we're working on right here are going to be the hip flexors that go from this area. One of them attaches right here, but the psoas major and minor go all the way through to the lower back. So by you really kind of putting that butt back, you're cheating because you're decreasing the area of the stretch. Yes. So actually what you, make, what you said makes absolute sense. Yes, and then it's so easy. I go, go down all the way if I have this position. Now for the people that might find that they need maybe a mobility drill, which is always, I think, fantastic because it helps kind of loosen up the area before we go into the stretch. One thing I love to use is either the rumble roller before the stretch or the Theragun during the stretch. All right, so went on a closing note, Lisa, I want to mention actually why I was using these things. I set up my house, I actually use the couch table and the couch. And the reason I like to do that is, well, one, I often use the Theragun in the morning. I'm lucky enough to have one to open this area up because that allows me to get that internal rotation of the hip that I want. But what I can do with these two boxes right now is I can really kind of get this traction from my upper body and lower body. So I like to kind of imagine something is pulling me up, but I'm trying to keep my knee on the ground. And that gets this, this traction or this space in between my hip, which also allows allows me to get a very unique stretch, but I also really like to sometimes drop down on one side or drop down on the other and really start to kind of just play with the different angles. Because what I noticed unfortunately is all you guys that are driving out there for I would say 45 minutes or more a day, or I mean sitting, which that is everybody, I increase my mileage 120 kilometers a day now, so it's about, I think, 90 miles, if I'm right or wrong, I don't know. But um, since then, I threw my back out like two or three times, and what I realized is it was the position that my hip was in, that my, my, my psoas and my iliacus, which we now know from the pictures before, was getting so tight that it was putting a lot of pressure on my sacroiliac joint, so that's the joint in the back of your bum, basically, and my back was coming out. So any of you guys know that when you throw your back out, that's your SI joint. And mine was getting so short from so much driving, especially my gas leg, because it's gas and brake, gas and brake, so you're using it in the sitting position. And I started throwing my back out, and this was the stretch that actually allowed it to open up and get better. All right, guys, so as always, thank you very much, Lisa, a million thanks as always if you are not following Lisa Karina Bueller do so now on Insta and everything else if you have not subscribed guys subscribe to the channel hit that bell up top the more subscribers I have the more people we can help and the comments I love even if you don't like the video I got lit on fire for the one we did last week totally cool I appreciate the comments no matter what I will always respond in a respectful way no matter how harsh some of the clients comments are and guys website man gtsgermany.com there and on Insta, same thing, you can get the free lifestyle program, sign up for the newsletter, and really stay up to date with what I'm doing and also with what Lisa is doing. So, guys, until next week, peace.